He says, on the 1st of April, we were visited by a number of natives in their boats, which resemble our bateau. I had no sooner beheld these Americans than I set them down for the same kind of people that inhabit the opposite side of the continent. They are rather above the middle stature, copper-colored, and of an athletic make. They have long black hair, which they generally wear in a club on the top of the head. They fill it when dressed with oil, paint, and the down of birds. They also paint their faces with red, blue, and white colors. But from whence they had them, or how they were prepared, they would not inform us, nor could we tell. Their clothing generally consists of skins, but they have two other sorts of garments. The one is made of the inner rind of some sort of bark twisted and united together, like the woof of our coarse clothes. The other very strongly resembles the New Zealand togo, and is also principally made with the hair of their dogs, which are mostly white and of the domestic kind. In their manners, they resemble the other aborigines of North America. They are bold and ferocious, sly and reserved, not easily provoked, but revengeful. We saw no signs of religion or worship among them, and if they sacrifice, it is to the God of Liberty. What's most striking in this is how he is using familiar categories to try and understand this other population. He actually had many encounters with Native Americans in Connecticut, New Hampshire, where he grew up and was interested in these settlements. So when he goes to sea and goes to the Pacific, he's looking for things that are familiar. Why is it that he keeps comparing them to Indians? Is that because they're like Indians of New England or because that's what he knows? And so that's a useful category to put them in. In this case, you see it again and again. I had no sooner beheld these Americans than I set them down for the same kind of people. He's making an argument about essential identity that's true on opposite sides, in this case of the North American continent, but also among peoples that had no way of interacting with each other. It's the Europeans who are making this connection. The descriptions of clothing and appearance are very common in travel narratives. They often have very good descriptions of what people are wearing, what they eat, how they look, what kind of decorations are on their clothes, in their hair. That, again, is often done because travelers often feel an obligation to recreate what they're seeing for their audience and, and it sells, it sells books. But it's also something that's obvious. The travelers can see this and so they can write about it. This one is unusual because he admits things that he doesn't know and he admits he doesn't know them because they won't tell him. Often that is not an obvious to an outsider or an outsider is deliberately kept away. We saw no signs of religion or worship among them. Does that mean they have no religion, or does that mean that they don't want an outsider observing? The fact that he puts it in those ways, we saw in those signs, rather than saying they don't have a religion. In some ways, it's more common for travelers to think if they don't see a sign of religion, that there is no religion. Clearly, here he's projecting onto this population. They are bold and ferocious, sly and reserved, not easily provoked, but revengeful. I think that is, in some ways, the worst part of travel accounts, is to make these extraordinarily broad, sweeping generalizations about a population based on extremely limited encounter. How does he know they're not easily provoked but revengeful? What might have happened that would make him think that? Is this accurate? Is this a useful way to think about this particular culture? Or does it tell us more about his expectations and the expectations that he's bringing in to this kind of encounter? in terms of interpreting journals written by Westerners about other cultures. There's a homogenization. Our culture is like this, their culture is like that, and all of their cultures are kind of the same. I mean, there's sort of this implicit us and them dichotomy. And in this case, the them is the Pacific Island culture, the Native American culture, and 